The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Welcome to my brother, my brother, me, and advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother, 30 under 30 boy, Griffin McElroy. I got a, I, I came up with a um, theme for this opening bit. Okay, oh, go, go for yeah, it. Do it again. Is Sorry. That, I just. I, I won't do it if you guys, if you guys. No, rip it, no, rip, rip, rip that shit. No, do okay. it. Grip it and rip okay. it. Okay. You got your problems. Whoa. I got my eyes wide. Oh, you got your big G's. G, G, G. I got my smash pipe. This is smash pipe. <laughs> Wait, it's hold on. We, it's where we take, it's a Smash Brothers dispatch direct from us to you. Come I don't think it up. counts as fair use, Justin, if you just change it's a parody. cash to smash. I don't <laughs> think that parody. counts as a parody. Travis, listen, there's no amount of licensing fees I would not pay to keep that great joke <laughs> in the beginning of our episode of our podcast. Okay. Welcome to Smash Pipe, everyone. <laughs> Light it up and huff this great news and strategies and cheat codes for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Um, Can I start it off with a little cheat? Um, that also is going to include my favorite character to play as. Go for it, please. Um, if you scroll all the way up in the character creation screen, I mean, just keep holding up way past when it seems like there's no further to go up. You can eventually select the pencil from the NES game Anticipation. Fucking great. And, and I bet you can I, play uh, as the pencil. Fuck, it's so good. Such a good song. What he does is he just, he draws a cube around the other players and then they can't escape from that cube. That's pretty good. It takes forever though. You have to wait. That hints the anticipation. Justin, you got any, who's your favorite characters and strategies and cheat codes from Super Smash Brothers? I have a cheat code that I'd like to lay out. My favorite character is C-Man. He can't do anything because the they they won't have pure water stages. Mm-hmm. Um, so C Man just lays on the ground and complains at you until you throw him back. But then it's like ring out. <laughs> so that's a loss every time. It's a guaranteed loss. But it's yeah. a challenging character with a lot of different dimensions. Uh, my cheat code is that if you press A three times in a row at any point while you're playing the game. It you will get a refund check from Reggie Fizeme from his personal checking account. Wow! And that wow. is true. Does the game self delete at that point? <laughs> the or? game self deletes, and it wipes your hard drive of any and your memory uh, of all <laughs> every Smash Brothers. And it doesn't even give you like an "Are you sure you want to do this?" kind of command. <laughs> no, no, no. If you press the the A button three times, you get a refund check from Rezi, Reggie Reggie May's personal checking account. That's your good. Your mind is erased of all Smash wow. Brothers secrets and content, and also the middle names of everyone you know and love. Wow, that's good. Well, my favorite character is Tony Shalhoub um, in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, and my cheat code. He's the best. First of all, he's a great edge defender, and he's easier to wave dash. But my cheat code is obviously. The character has lots of costumes, Mm -hmm. red monk, blue monk. uh, They're all sort of variations on monk, electric monk. But you know how the Switch has amiibos? Uh Uh-huh. It's a delightful new creation for Nintendo that blends both toy and game alike. If you scan amiibos on it, you you can earn unlocks, as we call them in the business. If you can find Tony Shalhoub in real life and swipe his face across your Switch. Uh Uh-huh. It'll unlock the Antonio Scarpacci skin. Whoa. Wow. That's huge. That's My huge. favorite character is oh. the big scary moon from Majora's Mask. Yeah, well, yeah. And big you, one. Cr- you crash into the whole screen. 
I tell you my favorite character. I'll tell you my favorite character. I'll tell you my favorite character. character. My, favorite favorite character. character. My, my favorite character is my favorite character. My favorite character. My favorite character. My favorite character is Bowser the Third. He's Bowser Jr.'s son. Bowser Jr. Uh-huh. first appeared in 2002, Super Mario Sunshine. He's a teen dad. Bowser Jr. is now a teen dad, a 16-year-old teen dad of his son, a baby, named Bowser the Third. He's Bowser Jr.'s son, and he's a great new character in the game Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Okay. I like I like Donkey Dong. <laughs> I'm just I'm just bananas for Donkey Dong. <laughs> I like Donkey Duck. He's in there too from the Good Place. That character from the Good Place. All the Good Place characters are in it. Again. They're in there. Back They're all for another in there. round. They're all in there. Can you so, play as Mario? No. So we've done pretty much all of the video game jokes for 2019. We sorry, gang. We looked at the ledger. We realized that we had a large budget of video game jokes that we hadn't told. Mm -hmm. And now that we've ostracized these sort of non ludological members of our audience, yeah, maybe we get into our core. 2019. We're gonna get back to video games. That's Mm -hmm. where. That's who raised us. Who supped us at their proverbial breast and we are we not we are proverbial here because of games. no not proverbial mario's literal breast the i ga- supped, on, game I supped milk. on mario i drank the, the game milk and the game milk strong. for the special game cow that we've supped on uh grew us to where we are today so we're really excited i'd love to get back to uh my wii u so i could play more smash brothers ultimate right now but i can't because I got to do this podcast. We could do both at the same time. Oh, That's man. That might be a good radio. streaming thing that people could watch. You know, if we were going to do that, Travis, you know where people could find it? At our YouTube channel or on our website, uh, the family. Yes, that's the one, Travis. Our YouTube channel is just called McElroy Family. We finally have a website, folks. That's just too exciting to wait for the end of the show. We have a website, <laughs> believe it or not. We did it. We set up our GeoCities account, finally. And uh, that's a partnership with Vox. They are helping us with the the website. There's uh, if you ever watched Monster Factory from me and Griff, that's that's here. Uh, new episode there on our channel, the McElroy family. And uh, for some bizarre reason, there's also the episodes I did of Carry On, uh, a journey through the cinematic career of that, Jim Carrey, starting at the I beginning. Begged you not. To this put is that a on bug. There. This is a bug. This, this is, is a, a bug, bug, and we will get it worked out by the time. But, you this know, episode if goes I out. get enough positive feedback, maybe I'll record the next one. I still haven't done Once Bitten. That's the next one in the chronological order. I only got like four movies into what I assume is like 50 some movies that man has done. So if you want me to keep going reviewing Jim Carrey movies, go to the McElroy dot family, click on videos, watch some carry on. Let me know what you think. Uh, that's the new home of carry on McElroy dot family. Go check it out. There's lots of other stuff there, but, uh, if you, uh, like it, we hope you'll bookmark it and make it your homepage. And the only page, it's also a search engine. <laughs> as long as the only thing you need is our content. Um, Let's get into some advice because I have missed helping people while I've been busy joining this hot, uh, extremely stable world of uh, digital media websites. Mm -hmm. So excited to get into it finally. Uh, But let's uh, let's help some people, all right? Is that okay? Do it. Just, yes, go. Just do it. Go. Yeah, you don't need our permission. Today I learned that next week the office team I'm part of is going to be going paintballing as a form of team bonding. I'm very excited by this since I've always wanted to go paintballing and I'm also very competitive in nature. However, everyone that will be there is either my boss or someone who has worked at my office much longer than I have since I was only just hired at the beginning of the year. I'm worried about getting into the game and maybe shooting some people I really shouldn't. What should I do? Any advice on the best level of competitiveness I should try to achieve? And that's from Concerned and Competitive in Calamesa. Well, I mean, you got your squeegee? You got your squeegee ready? Oh, no. Griffin. What's wrong? Is that your... <laughs> uh, my watch just heard the entirety of that question and would love to weigh in on <laughs> on it. Sorry, watch. It said, I'm not sure I understand. Yeah, no shit, watch. Yeah, dude. Calm, calm down. Daddy's trying to record, okay? Um, I think that you should go full. Yes. Bore. I think that, like, this is, uh, our, we, as humans, many of us have been fortunate enough to not have to taste of battle. <laughs> and this is, and this is a, a time to find if something is will be awoken within you that maybe the person that gets the sandwiches can s- then be the lord of murder. 
yes. that with so, so much blood on their hands. And from then on, when they get their sandwiches from you, they will know is hand is from death himself is coming is getting the sandwiches today. Do do they make blood balls? Just they like have to full blown just blood balls, Cow's so that the or... so that the feeling of the war horniness. You can really warniness, feel it. please. The warniness does it really so it can really just kick in. All you have to do, gear. this is easy. All you have to do is make sure you're on whoever the head boss is yes. on their team. Like, because then you go hard and they're like, one, I appreciate your commitment. Two, I appreciate how you just paintball murdered everyone in accounting. You just spend the entire game leaping in front of your boss and yelling no. Yes. And eventually eventually someone is going to shoot you while yes. you're doing that. And they can't, legally, they can't fire you at that point. Um, yeah. it, you know, can I say something? It is wild in this particular climate of 2018 where it's like, I feel like, and, and rightly so, people are a lot more plugged in to how to make everyone feel like comfortable in a working environment and sort of where those lines are because they had been so very blurred for so long, except to uh, this Saturday, we're all gonna fucking blaze each other <laughs> with extremely painful guns, and yes, and and there will be people who feel targeted because they're literally one hundred percent being targeted by our extremely painful, painful yet non lethal weaponry. That's like, crazy. Do you live in the one state where, like, I don't know where Calamesa is? Probably in California, it seems like. Do you not have laser tag within a hundred mile radius of you? Because it's like paintball, nah, nah, but with nah, like nachos nah, and nah, no paint. Nah, 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 nah. You gotta feel it, Trav. Yeah. I can't feel a laser. And they try to make the vest vibrate, and that does not set off my war horniness. I need it to be, I need the feeling. Can I make a suggestion to you that's different from the suggestions we've put forward so far? Please do. You're on your team, and there's an enemy team. Maybe you're playing capture the flag. Maybe you're just playing a good old team death match. You leave your team immediately. Run away from as fast as you can. Head into the woods. In there, you're going to find the ghillie suit that you planted the previous night. And you're going to climb into that. You're going to find the you know $500 uh, sniper paintball rifle that you bought on the dark web. And then you're just going to start taking people out sort of agnostic f of team Ooh. just sort of away from team you are going to you're be, going rogue you're going to be predator you're going to have two long sort of paint rollers that are going to shoot out of your wrists like you know wrist mounted blades that you're going to cover in paint and hit people with them but when they turn to look at what hit them you're already gone and then they're going to call a ref and be like is this legal they is this legal you hit you me with a paint roller you should tell people you're not going to come Tell them that you'd love to make it, but you're going to be on vacation in Petaluma, and go and send them pictures. Like, what? Set up your phone. Yeah, you can probably get like an automator script to do this or something. But, like, text everybody at your office mid match. Like, having a great time here in Petaluma. Yes. Wish you were here. Wish I could be there. Hope y'all are being safe out there. And then, like, while they're checking your text, boop, 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 yeah. boop, 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 dead. What's that? You're triangulating the signal. You used it. Oh, you heard their That's their so message tones good. go off. You come Whoa. up from the ground, you just splatoon them from the inside out. I love it. Add everybody yes. in your office. Say, hey, listen, I'd love to keep track of the fun. Can I add you on Find My Friends? Oh, uh, yeah. I, before, I'd love to keep track of all the fun everybody's having. And then, like, how does he know oh, where I am? Oh, that's great. You send him that picture, right? And then they text back, like, looks great. Bling. What's that? It sounded like that message alert came from right behind me. Pat, 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 pat. Good. Um, hey, can I read y'all Yahoo? Yes, please. No, but do just have fun out there. Yeah, just have a lot just of fun. Lot you of won't, because it's the most exhausting activity so that people Yeah, maybe ever just wanted. let yourself get shot and it's go a, to like the concession stand and uh, have like an ice cream cone or something. Something. Um, Addy sent this one, and thank you, Addy. It's a Yahoo Answers user who has chosen to remain anonymous, and I respect their choice, so they will get no name. They ask, if I break a wishbone by myself... Right hand versus left hand, will I get my wish? My husband always gets the larger part of the wishbone. Always. And cons consequently gets his wish. He's wished for and received trips, cars, money, even what? a dog. What? Let me start over. He's wished for and received trips, cars, money, even a dog, which magically showed up after he got the bigger part huh? of the wishbone. 
I, on the other hand, have gotten nothing. Mm. So I've decided to break the wishbone by myself. The right hand will have one wish and the left hand will have a different wish. My 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 husband says it is t- <laughs> the means of distribution of the two wishes to your two discreet hands is something I'm very curious about. If you whisper it into your closed fist and try not to let it escape. Anyway, my husband says it is totally against the wishbone quote rules and I'll end up putting a hex on all our future wishbone endeavors. Oh. Can anyone offer any insight on the wishbone dilemma? I sure can offer insight. Mm-hmm. Your husband wants to buy himself trips and cars and dogs and stuff and he's already done it and then he rigs a wishbone so that he wins and then he's like <laughs> I didn't buy it honey, the wishbone brought the car. It's a complicated pulley system yes. that he has attached to the back of his belt. He wins the wishbone, he starts walking backwards, the pulley releases the dog suspended from the seat Yes. Miracle dog. Thank you, Wishbone. And your I, husband knows that if you were to break it yourself, you would blow this whole thing wide open. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. I am not a vegetarian, obviously. Okay. Uh, love meat. I Weird don't... time to make this kind of revelation, Justin, but it, go on. Yeah, um, it, <laughs> this is one, yeah. I'm not sure I could explain to turkeys. <laughs> If turkeys did decide to ask me, like, are you sure mm. about this, about the the whole thing, I would say, like, yeah, I get it. Like, I need to eat you for sustenance. And they're like, okay, but what about the part where you wait for my dad's <laughs> neck bone to dry, and then you uh, you and your dad <laughs> grab it and fight over it and break it in front of me and then make a wish on my dad's dried bones? As you yeah. said, what I can only have- call, like, a macabre sacrifice to your hope that I don't know your favorite football team wins or some shit. Nonsense. Like it could. It's it's ghoulish. I would have a hard time. Sort like you didn't even call it by the bone that it is in the turkey. You're right. calling it a wishbone. Wink. Nope. It's not. It's not that. This I couldn't stop thinking about this when I was looking at this Yahoo. This thought of like you know how in like cartoons and like some fantasy shit, there's like ogres or like um, like the urukai in the the Lord of the Rings movies where you look at them and they like just fucking tear a, a little goblin apart and start gnawing on its bones and you see that and you're like mm, barbaric. That's kind of what we do with the yes. turkey's neck every year, it seems like, a little bit. It's kind of, maybe now we're the we're the barbarians. I no. mean, there was a moment, this was my first year making a turkey, roasting a turkey for Thanksgiving, and I did at one point put it on my hand like a Muppet, and I thought that was very funny, not thinking about the fact that at one point it was a it living was a guy, being it was a who guy, probably yeah. friends. Um, so does the wish come true if you do it by yourself? Let's, I want to return to the idea of individual wish deployment. Do you write it on your palms? Do you hold it in your hand like a little butterfly and try not to let the wish go away? You, do you have one wish that you clearly prefer, right? And maybe that's how the wishbone magic continues is one of the wishes is like, I get a check for, you know, $10,000. And the other one is like, you know, I don't lose my car keys for the rest of the year, which you want the money, but either one's a wish. It's mm. gotta be a blind, a double blind kind of thing where like you you put a whole bunch of wishes in a bowl, you draw two out, you put them in your shoes, you put the yeah. shoes on, you don't look. Maybe. Right, right? you can like, literally the right hand can't know what the left hand is doing, mm. right? Or and But here's the thing, what you do, <clears throat> and this is what they don't tell you, you run the risk of the wishbone splitting perfectly in half and you oh die. God. Yeah, that's what it would do. Wow. The because genie comes out, strangles if, you. Yes, if that kind of power was unleashed. <laughs> There's a genie just sort of riding around inside of every turkey's neck, just waiting for his chance. Yep. Um, just yeah, waiting he's to like, kill hey, you. I have a wish. <laughs> as, long as, the, as long as my neck can grant wishes, you know the wish that I have? <laughs> can you guess? Do you think if a turkey... <laughs> Like has an accident and a skateboard or something and breaks its neck, it gets its wish. Oh, I wish I don't die. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> what? Whoa. I'm fine. That's how they discovered it. it then we har- started harvesting them for their wish powers, and then we found out they were also delicious. <laughs> they were awesome to eat. Um, yeah, we, we should do something with the rest of this bird should, and not this just use this one. This, bone. You're right. Thank you, Todd. Thank you for saying what we were all thinking. This is extremely wasteful. <laughs> we're just digging this magic bone out. <laughs> 
<laughs> There's got to be a better way. Well, I mean, it definitely, if, if, if you got to think of this Occam's razor style. They see a turkey doing rad skateboard tricks. It has a tragic fall, snaps its neck, but then it gets back up. A wish has been granted. It's fine. I don't think the next step is eat it. I think the next step is let's explore the magical possibilities of the rest of the bones in this yes. creature. That's like if, if you know, if you saw Superman be invincible, your first thought wouldn't be, let's eat him. Yeah. You would get there eventually, but you'd probably mm-hmm. be like, we should study him. Can you use your losing bone shard mm-hmm. to jab, stab your husband right in the neck, and then you claim his winning bone shard and the wish he wanted? Ooh. What if his wish was to lose at the wishbone? Oh, uh-huh. damn. I know this riddle. You have to ask one of the wishbones, what the other one will say. Yeah. How about a question? Uh, I would love that. My boss and I were talking one day, and she told me about her favorite candy bar, which she said is very hard to find. The next day I discovered that my local grocery store happens to carry said candy bar, so I bought her one as a surprise. I gave it to her the next day, and she seemed genuinely excited, but then she stashed the candy bar in the freezer at my workstation. Ooh, it's been a week, and the candy bar is still in the freezer. Wowzers. Can I eat it? That's, for- That's a, Oh, I didn't expect the question to end like that. Me I expected it to be like, hey, what should I do? Because she's not she's not enjoying my gift the way I envisioned. That's from, that's from a clever, alliterated name in New York City. Um, huh. Yeah. No. Justin? Yeah? Split the, split the wishbone. No. Yeah. I said, no, no. to be fair, when I said yeah, that was I was referring to the stumpedness of you two. Oh, and I see. Not, I see. not me saying, yes, eat. Because this, if I gave someone a lovely candy bar and they put it on a shelf, perhaps to display it, I wouldn't then say, well, you missed your window. It's mine again now and eat it. It, it is, I will say two things. One, it's not necessarily a dunk on your candy bar gift some people just like like listen there's a lot of candy i love and i could secure because i'm a grown man yeah but i'm not gonna go out and secure it because if i eat that kind of sugar that's my week gang (laughs) that's it man a snickers bar would put me in the fucking hospital (laughs) i can't i I love your candy gift are you trying to kill me because i'm gonna eat this and then i'm gonna go home be like well that's my whole day and eat an entire box of Lucky Charms. And then I'll say, that's my whole week. And that's it. Yeah. Well, let me tell I would like to take this one step further, right? Your boss said it's hard to find. You found one. What's she supposed to do? Just go ahead and eat that on any old day of the week? No. It's special. No, it's got to be it's special. It's a hard though. to find candy bar. She is saving it for when you guys, I don't know, land the big account or yes. whatever and save the business. Or the big meteor. The big meteor is going to fall. When the big then, meteor is going to fall and you land the big meteor and save the business. <laughs> and you, you blow up the big meteor and save the business and everybody else on planet Earth. And and they're like, hey, you did it, uh, digital media startup company. You say you destroyed that meteor uh, because it was easier to train you to be astronauts uh, than train astronauts to be digital media executives or whatever. I and have, then you blow, I'm not done. You blow yeah. up the meteor and then, ah, candy bar time. Okay, now I'm done. I have to share with you all this visceral reaction I'm having to this question. I can't explain why it's so powerful, but since we have started discussing it, my I can't I can't stop thinking about and imagining and envisioning so much so that I feel like it's actually happening in my actual mouth and body. Uh, the thought of eating a Three Musketeers bar, like now, like a king size Three Musketeers bar now as a 31 year old adult. Just the feeling of gomming down all of that sweet nougat and like what that would feel like, taste like. Is that a pleasant uh, smell feeling like that you're all, No, no, no. It's quite bad, no. quite bad. I'm saying, in, in trying to ingest that truck bed full of nougat, <laughs> I'm just envisioning what it would like. I, it, It's obviously, it's a fancy fantasy land. If I actually tried to do that, like I would need to be standing in front of my own open grave so yes. I could just kind of topple over <laughs> into it. I'm just thinking about trying to get all that nougat down. It's like a fucking survivor challenge in Sometimes my mind. Sometimes I think about this how I do this where I'll open a candy bar I will eat, let's say, a third of it, and then kind of fold the wrapper back over it Positively. and place it somewhere. Yes. And I just picture like nine-year-old Travis just like crying and weeping yeah. at what I have become. Like, you can't finish 
a candy. Like, we took BB trick-or-treating, which means I got a lot of candy. And, like, the fun size bars, I was like, oh, thank God. Not uh, even, uh, but for me, those are not even fun sized anymore. Yes. What would be fun sized is like a little amuse bouche of Snickers served out of a tiny spoon. When I give me that technology, Mars. When I was a young man and I, I was selling candy for a fundraiser and I sold a packet of Skittles to my uh, Spanish professor, Senora Barry. And I, I upon the next uh, arrival uh, at the class, the beginning of class, she told me how much she enjoyed the Skittles. But then she told me she had to cut the Skittles in half because they were so extremely sweet. <laughs> and and I, friends, I'm here to tell you, I'm saying this with a lot of shame in my heart. I laughed. I laughed in her face that day, that Dia, if you will. And I feel a lot of regret about that because at this point in my life, I, I get it. Senor Barry, I'm sorry if you're out there listening. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, for laughing when at you. I, now I'm experiencing deja vu because either we've talked about that explicitly on this show before Probably or have. somebody just changed something in the Matrix. Um, I or When I was a kid, I sold candy bars for band and they were those kind of like, not name brand, just kind of silver with a white wrapper and some kind of like, it just said like crackle. But I, out of like the 30 bars, ate 20 of them myself. Oh, Hell crap. yeah. And then I had to go to mom and dad and say like, hey, I need to borrow $20 to cover my debt. Got fucking high on my own supply, gang. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I think about that now and like, I might as well have eaten 20 rocks as far as I'm sure. concerned now as an adult. Now, a Kit Kat I can fuck with. Kit okay. Kat, you can, the, the the catchphrase, give me a break, for me, that is prescriptive yes. in a way. <laughs> it's pre-portioned. Yes. Sometimes um, I cut the Reese's in half. Oh my I can't God. eat a whole Reese's cup. Huh. What is Let, this, Christmas? Let's step out of the candy corner. Okay. I'm, I'm can I do a quick yacht? Yeah, quick. Now, let's do a quick Yahoo. Okay. Because I don't think this will give us much room to play in the space. I want you guys to play with me. I just don't think it's going to be possible. I just really want to explore this. It was sent in by Ian. Thank you, Ian. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user who I'm going to call um, Poppy, who asks, is it possible to drink water without making any throat sounds at all? Huh. I don't want to name names. I have edited at this point approximately 520 maybe plus hours of all of us out talking. of this episode no out of out of all of the podcasts oh. we've ever done i just thought about that number and my butthole puckered up deep deep it's deep down up inside of me um some of us i don't want to name names make pretty bad throat noises when they drink and it makes me think that the is throat it is me putting, no is it me it's not travis <laughs> And it makes me think your throat is doing extra work. <laughs> it makes me think your throat, like, when the water hits it, it gets panicked, and every muscle in your throat is like, get this shit down to the tummy! <laughs> um, Are and you, so... It, maybe one of us is drinking chunkier water than the rest of us? It's possible that West Virginia water is maybe, it's got good, it's got a, a lot of protein in it. It's, it's got a lot of minerals. <laughs> it's possible. So part of it is if I work up the nerve to drink some water, mm. I I feel like I better make it really count because I'm yeah. already here. I better see how much I can get inside. Yeah, sure. So what can we do so that just I, I don't I actually like the noise just it's to the point where it's like, you know, I use I can't sleep without my wife snoring situation. Um, but. Is there anything we can do just to make the edit a little bit easier to make that water go down completely silently? Okay, <laughs> completely well, I have a bottle of water here. And okay. I'm going um, um, to turn up. I'm going to put my microphone right in my throat. I it, yeah, just put your sort of your glottis like right up against the microphone. Just to and see if you're like full of shit. Give me okay, the bass. I'm just the bass here. Like a bass here. line. A big, a big swig, too. Don't take no baby okay. sips. Oh, yeah, God. so that's this is this is the sort of heat that I de I have to touch with my special gloves uh, every every week, sometimes twice a week. Um, Justin, how would you feel about if we installed within your throat some sort of sluice situation? A where sluice we, would be good. We could completely bypass any swallowing muscles, mm. and you would an, just pour an, it down a wooden track. I saw an e an episode of ER once. I think it was George Clooney. Did a tracheotomy with a ballpoint pen? I think yeah. you might be thinking of scrubs. 
Yeah, or the good doctor. There's show. a lot of possibilities. It's, it's hard to say, but I it might be Grey's Anatomy. I'm saying if you could do that with a pin, you sh- you could certainly do that with a Capri Sun straw, and just kind of hook me up, <laughs> <laughs> hook you up to a Capri Sun, right? I mean, we could get less uh, gory with it and just hook you up with a proboscis, and then it's up to you and everything. Well, you but use then you it. might have to deal with this kind of noise. <laughs> No, 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 it dip, dip, it dip in. Do you hear noises when you're, you're drinking a full drink with a straw? Not usually. What about just like a beer bong, but the end of it connects to his belly button and just goes straight inside his tummy? This is obviously the best imaginable scenario, Travis. Yes. I I was about to suggest that I could try to, to do it silently, but I feel like if I succeeded, that would be not great for me, because then if the noise ever happened, it would feel very intentional and threatening. Mm. Is it possible that you could just sleep, not in your bed where you traditionally sleep, but in like a a kiddie pool full of like water with a little bit of glucose in it or something, and you absorb through your skin like a froggy frog all the water that you need throughout the day. And that's gonna be actually juice pretty fucking efficient if you think about it. That would be nice. You know, it, it doesn't even just have to be at night. If we could build some kind of like pod where your head is out and you're able to speak into the microphone but inside of the pod is just your body mm. osmosising water all oh, the time. Oh shit, flip it, flip it, flip that shit. Flip that shit around. I'm imagining a sort of beanbag sized apparatus or perhaps uh-huh. a um, like a punching bag that boxers use to get, str- what are they doing with that thing? Getting stronger? I don't think just so. Just toughening up their knuckles. Yeah, I guess so. One of those, it's about that size but it's full of water. Uh-huh. And we hang that up next to Justin's desk. And then whenever you need to take a drink of water, Justin, your whole body can enter it, and you just drink in there. And I Ooh. guarantee you no sound's going to escape. Ooh, I like that. What if, mm. beginning of the week, like a train, yeah. Justin moves under a big water tower, we open it, oh. it pours down his throat, and he has all of his water for the week in one go. That works, too. What, so, Juice, you get to pick now. Yeah. Boy, we spent a lot of time sort of criticizing the old train, man. <laughs> <laughs> It Not was, really criticizing. It was fun. I remember distinctly <laughs> it being fun for a second. Hmm. I mm. think what I think the easy fix juice mm. is just put some water in your mouth <laughs> and then mm. sort of tilt your head upward, but don't <laughs> don't do anything with your muscles. No and muscular just, work out. Yeah, all. just let the water <laughs> just let the water fall down your neck. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's going to be better for you. It's going to, like, when you have a sore throat, like, no ish at all because yes. the water just kind of falls down you. <sighs> give it a, give that a spin now. So, okay. Give that a spin so for there's me. There's no swallowing. No muscular no, no, no. movement at all. Just, yeah. just, open. yeah, you're going to, you're going to swallow. Open. Now, juice, 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 wait, before you do it, mm-hmm. that water's going to want to go down your lung holes. Okay. Sorry. Close those off. Think, Close those think up. about not doing that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, here we go. It got worse? Yeah, this is worse. It's worse. It's worse. Let's go to the money zone. I don't want to talk. You guys talk. Uh, yeah, sure. I imagine you've done a number uh, on your you most of your, body or, back in order your here. vital organs. Uh, hey, I want to tell you all about Squarespace. Bad timing uh, on this one. Whoops, the daisy. <laughs> Squarespace is fantastic. Squarespace allows you to build a beautiful website you can use to showcase your work, announce an upcoming event or special project, promote your physical or online business, and more. True, yes, we do have a new website elsewhere, but I still use Squarespace for my personal website. It was super easy to put together. Uh, Travis is uh, set up uh, Buttercup is a good, good girl. Buttercup is, is a very good girl.com. Yeah, that's a square pay- space joint. If you want to make a website and you want to make it fucking now and you want it to look awesome and you want it to have e commerce functionality and analytics and built in search engine optimization and award winning customer support 24 hours a day, I mean, you got Squarespace. Squarespace and, is. And let me tops. say this uh, we have got ourselves a second dog. Her name is Lily. She is also a very good girl.com. And as soon as I get enough pictures of her, I will be building another Squarespace website called lilyisaverygoodgirl.com. I should go buy that now before this episode goes up. Yes. And just go ahead and sit on that. 
I mean, the real competition, I think, is you need to do it before Justin does it. Cause oh, he, no. Yeah, the juice the race is on if you've recovered. Uh, and he's going to be way faster at it than me. So go to squarespace.com slash my brother for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code my brother, all one word, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Oh, sorry. I'm racing Justin. Yeah, I can't wait to see the results of this. I'm just going to lose it. He needs this. I need uh, it. I don't, I don't need your charity. <laughs> I don't need your charity. Okay, then you read the next one while I get it. All right, yeah, you grab it, Trav. Go for it, bud. Get it, Trav. Get it. I don't have it. <laughs> oh, no, did you already get it? You have any troubles getting it, bud? Did you already get it? Oh, bud, I got it three weeks ago, bud. <laughs> no, I got it when you adopted the dog, bud. Oh, no. You shouldn't have texted me. That you're getting a dog before you got to the URL of your dog. Obviously. Oh, no. uh, so Justin can now hook that up to whatever he wants. I'm going to read the next ad because you guys are taking too long. Uh, it's Quip. Quip is great. Everybody, I think I think all of us have a Quip toothbrush. I certainly do. And it's my, it's my sort of main bathroom bud. I use it and it fits in the mouth quite nice. And it uh, gets all the nasty stuff off there. Uh, and it's fun. I tell you my favorite thing about it, we travel pretty much nonstop these days, and it is so easy. It's got this little uh, case that you stick onto your mirror, and you put your toothbrush in it, and then whenever you want to travel, it comes off the mirror, and then the case covers up the, the sensitive bristles, and so you can yeah. just take it right with you. It's a great Also, it's an electric toothbrush. Tooth- Yes, it's an electric toothbrush, too. I don't know if I said that, which is great. I would not fuck with an analog toothbrush at this point. Uh, Anyway, Quip is the gift that keeps refreshing with brush heads automatically delivered on a dentist-recommended schedule every three months for just $5. I just got my first refill, uh, and just I I am never that diligent about upping, re-upping my toothbrush game, and it's so nice just getting those stiff bristles. You know what my favorite thing Uh, about it is? When you get the new one, you pop off the old one, and you use the and it says in the instructions use the old one to clean it up, so like yeah. get get make it feel like a new toothbrush again. It's genius. I'm also on the plan where I get a AAA battery with it. Also, right. uh, yeah, they don't recharge. Like you don't have to fucking worry about that. You just pop like one AAA into it. I think it's a weird flex, uh, but okay. So Lily is a very good girl. Dot com is taken. Yeah, so Quip is, it looks like a big ticket tech gift with a stocking stuffer price starting at just $25. Go to getquip.com slash my brother and get your first refill pack for free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack free at G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash my brother. So now I assume, Justin, I'm going to have to pay you or in maybe a bidding war. Off mic. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Hey, if you like your podcast to be focused and well-researched and your podcast host to be uncharismatic, unhorny strangers who have no interest in horses, then this is not the podcast for you. Again, what's your deal? (laughs) I'm Emily. I'm Lisa. Our show's called Baby Geniuses. And its hosts are horny adult idiots. We discover weird Wikipedia pages every episode. We discuss institutional misogyny. We ask each other the dumbest questions and our listeners won't stop sending us pictures of their butts. We haven't asked them to stop, but they also aren't stopping. Join us on Baby Geniuses every other week on MaximumFun.org. I want to munch. Squad. I want to munch. Squad. Um, this is a little bit different from a munch squad because it's not about a menu innovation. Uh, and it's not even a lot of like bizarre PR speak. I just wanna, hmm. I just wanna give it up to Burger King for going so hard <laughs> two in a row. I'm gonna give you the first one that's a little less amazing. Uh, Burger King introduces the dog purr, which um, is a, huh. so you, you need to say that again. I need you to really hit the consonants a little bit harder. <laughs> Burger King introduces the dog purr. Dog purr. Dog purr. D o g p u r instead of wa. There's oh. dog. It's a. Uh, oh Lord, take me now. So it's a take me into your blessed it's kingdom. Wa- it's a special flame grilled bone for your dog. The oh, thank you. If you get it through DoorDash, then you're gonna get a free one because they're gonna bring it to your house. They're gonna bring your food and then got a little something for your four legged friend, a little BK for uh, a little Burger King for your king. <laughs> Rex. Yeah. You know. I I don't have one of those. So what am I supposed to do with this? You eat I'm, it. You I, eat I, it. No, stop. 
stop. I want you guys to stop. And I want you to really use your fucking noggins. I want you to think about this. I would bet that a lot of people don't have dogs. I would say that if you're the type of person that has to order Burger King remotely, you, you're probably not in a place sort of uh, in your life where you can support a dog. And so with that in mind, Burger King will deliver their hamburgers to you and a bone. This is fantastic news for me. I Yes. It is good. I do question, um, most fast food hamburgers are inedible before you leave the parking lot. You have about yes. a 30 second freshness window to enjoy them and pretend you're eating food. But I cannot imagine. It's like, well, it's been in my trunk for 20 minutes. So happy to be here. Please enjoy <laughs> your food. Uh, adj- adjacent to a bone. Uh, and I, we, they are not saying where these bones are coming from. Yes. No. Now, here's the thing, Griffin. If you don't have a dog for your mm-hmm. dog per, you can save them up and build an anatomically correct edible skeleton. Did you know that? For who? And I don't think they're delivering skulls. For the king. Yeah, they're not delivering. Sk- if you you have no, two you dogs, you have to now. find this skull okay. in a whimsical cross country adventure. Um, I have a second. So like that, they came out with that right, legit. And then uh, this just came out yesterday or the day before. Uh, it's the Whopper Detour, and folks, I fucking love this. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> you can. Do you already know about it, Griffin? No, it's just the name makes me think that you, you're taking a, uh, uh, you're on the Eurail so, and you're taking a trip through the Mediterranean. <laughs> so here it is. You can get a uh, on from now until December twelfth. You can get a Burger King Whopper if you order it through the Burger King app. You can get a Whopper for one cent. <laughs> the se- the trick of it is, though, you're gonna love this. The trick of it is. You got to order it at McDonald's. <laughs> what? What? You have to go to McDonald's, activate the burger. <laughs> <laughs> what? You have to go to McDonald's. You have to turn on your Burger King app. And you're if you're within 600 feet of a McDonald's, <laughs> you can Are order you a Whopper for a penny. <laughs> So fucking good. I would, I would please do go Holy through the drive through. You have to go through the drive through. Like, what do you need? Like, uh, just your GPS coordinates, I guess, because <laughs> I'm getting a whopper for a penny. <laughs> this is, this is, this is very. This is. Uh, it's did not the even Jackass an one. crew just... become like the the new marketing team for for these? Seem like pranks to me. It is a prank. It's a prank. Um, you can order it at almost all of the McDonald's fourteen thousand locations. You can get yourself. Um, they they yeah, the poster for this is extremely good. It's the McDonald's sign, kind of blurred out, and it just says "Billion Swerved" because they fucking got you. <laughs> oh shit! They got you, McDonald's. They got- Holy shit! That's for- really good, actually. It's, yeah, we're enjoying this in a very. Uh, very direct and unironic way, which I'm not super comfortable about. Um, but it is, I feel like McDonald's and Burger King have a sort of mutually assured destruction, sort of stalemate, demilitarized zone between them right now. This is clearly an act of organized aggression that, like, I am terrified of what this, the rep- repercussions of this, what McDonald's is going to do to answer. Um, I Oh, God, you're right, Griffin. This is going to escalate. It is going to escalate. That's true. This is the beginning of a uh, an arms race. Um, <laughs> if you burn down a Burger King, you get free McDonald's for life. No, that don't say that, Griffin. I want to... I'm not done. I'm not done. The Swerve's extremely good, but this year, and this one's already come and gone, this year Burger King also opened WhopperShopper.com. What's what? what's whoppershopper.com, you ask? Well, it launched for Black Friday and went till Cyber Monday. So it was a real great, is a quick deal. It was a site heavily populated by banner ads from different brands. And then you would put in the name of the brands that are being advertised there. And then you, because you had, uh, every time someone would click on the site, Burger King would earn money, and then they would give that money direct to free Whoppers. So you would go to Whopper-Shopper.com and demand that brands <laughs> buy you hamburgers in exchange for clicking on their banner ads. 
<laughs> Thanks, Dick Sporting Goods. Thanks, Dicks. It does the presence of a munch squad in this episode mean we are not also getting that's a Christmas to me? Uh, it does. My wife and I have not had time to craft a new, a new uh, Hallmark film. I'm sorry. Let's answer another question. How does that sound to y'all? Yeah, is it? Yeah, regular question time. Recently, my close friend texted me asking if I still had Pokemon cards. Of course I do. Specifically, she wanted to know if I had a holographic Zapdos. Don't pretend like you don't know the word. I don't, bud. I don't. I never even finished one of those fucking things. And if so, if I was willing to part with it, I immediately and excitedly told her that I did. And of course she could have it for free. After a brief eBay search, I've realized that the version of the card I have is actually worth a good amount of money. What should I do? Do I still have to give it to her? Do I ask for some kind of payment? Or do I sell it on eBay for all it's worth? And this is this is from Pokemon Master in Medford. This is actually a good one. Let's let's. I, hey, can can we? I hate to ask this this close to the holidays. You guys mind if we send jokes out of the room for a couple minutes to really just yeah. hash through this? Oh yeah, jo- jokes, jokes, get out of jokes. here. Go have a sandwich. Go, go, go have a Burger King on a, a Burger King Whopper on us. Jokes. Um, um, let's take away. Let's abstract this. Okay. I think about the if my memory serves, I'm not as plugged into the market as I once was, but I think street value on a holographic Zapdos, if it's first edition, we're talking about uh seventy five to a hundred dollars. We sent we sent jugs out of the room. I'm just gonna check the bay. I'll just check the bay. Yeah. See 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 if I'm uh see if I'm close. Uh so if that's the case, if your friend says, Hey, do you have seventy five to a hundred dollars? and you say, Yes, and they say, are you willing to part with it? And you say, yes. You can't really walk that back, I feel like. There is a w- sort of wild variance on this. Um, I, 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 it looks like there is a Griffin. Just will you look, Griffin? Because you could probably like yeah. decode this a little better than I could. What did you search for? Holographic Zapdos. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, we got some pre-owned ones that look a little dingy, a little beat up. They could also be fake. Uh, some of them are from Sun and Moon, so they're not first edition. Those are the ones you're looking at that are like $1. Then you start getting into the uh, base set, first gen holographic Zapdos. So you're talking about $65. Here's a buy it now for $275. Here's a $200. Uh, here's, more, here's more what I was looking at, about $85, $84, $95, 100 That's about the. That's about where you're going to So there's some coin. I mean, there's some serious coin on the line here. yeah okay uh and some and you know what some serious zapdos we can't just sort of w- w- look at the monetary value we got to look at the strategic value this thing can play this thing can do thunder that's 60 damage you can also use thunderbolt for 100 damage like th- this is a this is a fucking powerful card it's a powerhouse mm, yeah i guess the thing that i'm left wondering and griffin maybe you can give some insight to this why would your friend call and ask you for Zapdos, if not because either A, it is a powerful card that they wish to use in playing the game, yeah, or B, they know it is worth money. Those are the only two reasons. The only third is some kind of art project that specifically needs that Zapdos-esque flair to it. Well, um, and boy, jokes has been out of the room for such a long time. I'm starting to miss them. But like, it could also be a collection thing, like where they they just need a holographic Zapdos. I mean, it's also kind of a cool looking card, isn't it? Look at this big bird, this big scary bird with a with a holographic background behind it. Mm. It's 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 a powerful object. Like sometimes you just want, you know, how people are like really into crystals because of the power that resides inside of them. Sure. That's kind of what's going on with this holographic Zapdos card. Um. Okay. What. <sighs> What do you owe this person? Uh, assuming it's monetary, what do you owe this person? Because it seems weird. It- we have to. We have to. There's no fucking way it's monetary for the for them to email you and say, "Do you have Pokemon cards? Do you have a holographic Zapdos? I need that." That's a wild way to get eighty five bucks off your friend, huh? It is wild, but they did say holographic, didn't they? They that's not for play. You could play. You can play a non-holographic Zapdos. Uh, but, Damn it, and, Justin, you're right. This also means, Griffin, if it's for a collection, they've looked it up and said, mm, $85, no thank you. I'll just see if they have one. con my idiot friend Jeremy. <laughs> yes. They know exactly what they're doing, Griffin. They're, I'm just, they're yeah. trying to catch them all. And by um, I mean you. And by <laughs> all, I mean in a trap. I'm also pretty sure that Zapdos isn't allowed in like league play. It's legendary. Okay, let's this bring jokes like back really in the room. Rich. Hey, jokes. Yeah, thanks for coming. I'm, I'm afraid of Griffin. Fart, fart, so. fart. 
A what would smell like if Zapdos farted? Um, <laughs> a one man like play a fart. starring what if you had s- coming what to if Broadway. You had, yeah, what if you had sex with Zapdos and it was pregnant? Do you guys feel better now that the jokes a are back? A little bit, actually. a little bit. That is actually very good. I d- I think you have to ask them. Nope, sorry. You you agreed to it. You were so you were so excited about someone being interested in the collection that you just agreed to it. I think you gotta live with that. Yeah, yeah. Damn it! I wish I still had my fucking Pokemon cards. Damn it! I wish I was playing any kind of TCG right now, boys. You gotta stop me. I'm an adult with more money than I had when I was a teen. I could buy a bunch of TCG shit. What right happened now. to all your Pokemon cards, Griffin? Yeah, I did sell them. I did all right. Made a little, made a little scratch. Well, do you Gosh. think you would have made more money now if you had just waited? Uh, yeah, pal. <laughs> Does that bother you? Let's spend. Actually, let's spend the rest of this podcast just me looking up cards that I definitely did. Oh, holographic Blastoise. That's one hundred and seventy-five bucks. That's about what I uh, made for my entire collection. So that mm, that one oof, hurts. What oof. about Mew, uh, What about the promotional Mewtwo from the uh, from the movie that got released? Here it is for. Uh, two hundred forty nine dollars. So that one uh, really shrinks the old nuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can't find this Yahoo anymore. Griffin, you hey. need the distraction. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> this one was sent in by Nick G. Thank you, Nick. It's a Yahoo Answers user anonymous. What's weird is that it's an actual user who has made their name literally anonymous, which is strange. a strange way of going about it. Um, and it's uh, is this Radio Disney song about sex? Mm. Mm. Heard this song on Radio Disney the other day while my little sister was listening to it in the car. Started listening to the lyrics, and there seems to be a ton of sexual references in them. Show me yours, and I'll show you mine. You be the lock, and I'll be the key. W T A H. What do you, W T H? With what why is hell? this on? Why is this on Radio Disney? What do you think? Am I interpreting Ooh. the lyrics wrong? The song is Midnight Romeo by a, a band or artist named Push Play. This was on Radio Disney, where Goofy lives. Where Goofy, Goofy is lives. trapped inside Radio Disney. So some of the lyrics include, my lips touch your lips. My hands is on your hips. What's it going to take for you to give me my goodnight kiss? Man, they went for that, huh? Instead of the lyric, you'll be screaming for more, more, more of me. Yeah. So that's in there too. They turned it where off. Where Goofy huff. lives with his friend Donald <laughs> in my home. We're singing this next to Mickey Mouse, who's ninety years old. His fucking heart can't take me. Gonna Midnight make Romeo. you sweat. Gonna feel it head to toe. The now, or the, the orgasm. Says, right after that line, though, says, "I'll be your Doctor Jekyll, your Mister Hyde," which makes me think that Push Play might have a fundamental misunderstanding of the story of Doctor Jekyll and Mister <laughs> Hyde. Or, or, of sex. <laughs> this is a good song. <laughs> There's also a line here. Tonight's about to win. What's that mean? What's that mean? Hey, are you sure? Are you sure you got that you right? You guys don't say that right before you make coitus. I'm gonna tonight's gonna win. Tonight's, tonight's gonna be gonna so. Win. It's gonna be epic. I say that as I'm stretching, preparing my body. It's gonna be. It's about to be epic. I'm just saying. Uncle Scrooge is going to have to have a talk with Huey, Dewey, and Louie, who live inside of Radio Disney because this song is their new neighbor. And it's talking about, you know, sweat. I do believe, even if there were no other references, something about the word sweat in a song of like, I don't know how to explain this to my kids. It's ah, never sweat. been used in a non-erotic right. sense when speaking about music. If you're even going to make you sweat, that could be referring to dancing or perhaps working out. It could also be... A, you know, a reference to working out that boner. Uh, maybe we go through line by line and see if we can make it sort of, uh, we can interpret it in a Disney way. Okay. okay. So, uh, meet me at my door. I'm also looking at the lyrics. By the end, meet me by my door at the, by the end of the night. That's okay. That could be something you say to a UPS driver. I have a pizza yes. for you. You'll be screaming for more and more and more of okay. Already we've hit a considerable That's roadblock. Ex- this is a pretty difficult. big bump. That's challenging. Um, I also want to say, though, the next line is, tonight's a big night, so let's make history. Okay, Which yes. must imply that the sex is going to be so good, people will write <laughs> about it for years to come. 2018, the year of our Lord. <laughs> so what if they finally figured out sex let's take this first stanza and we'll say that it is actually about a pizza being delivered and it is sung from the from the perspective of the pizza okay Okay. you'll be screaming for more 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 of me Mm 
Hey, more pizza, please. That goes with my lips touch your lips. It'd be like, oh, your lips touch my pizza lips, I guess. Yeah, that's, lips. Uh, false apart, that's what pepperonis yeah. is. Pepperonis is pizza lip. Now, my, hands my hand is on, is on your, your hips. hips. Now, that could just be my pizza hands are kind of on your, like a moment on the lips a lifetime. Oh, like you're, oh, yes, yes, like yes. You're putting on the LBs from eating so much za. What, What's uh, it going to take for you to give me my good night kiss? Like, a late, late night sack. I thought you were done. You came back from what is za. Perfect. Oh, oh no. guys ever Have you guys ever left? I've done this so many times recently. I, I hate to admit it. I, have you guys ever left a pizza out all night in self defense? <laughs> I've gotten in the habit of like, it's I gotta let it rot. I can't put it away. I'll you gotta let it rot. You got now. This fits our pizza theme. It's because so the next good. Line is oh whoa, my heart is being fast, but my hands are moving slow. I think this person is having a heart attack. They ate it too much pizza. Yeah, sure. Now their heart is being fast, and like their hand, you know, they're having pain in their arm. Okay, so this one's tough. Late night, gonna hit the town, gonna take you out, gonna make you, you would go, not do this whoa, with, whoa. Wouldn't do, wouldn't do pizza that with pizza. Can't, no. I can't. <laughs> you could take your pizza out on the town like, hey, pizza, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite hot spots. I don't think mm -hmm. pizza can be like, this one's on me. Let's go. I'm well, driving. Yeah, is this pizza. a switch in perspective to the to the driver, maybe? No, I mean, if that's the case, then it's the gonna make you sweat. It's, I, here's the problem, boys. I'm looking three lines ahead. We got gonna make you sweat, and it's gonna be We've tough. We got to, that, and show me yours, and I'll show you mine. And then it's just That's hard. just tough. And I'll tell you, there's no reason. I've eaten so much pizza in my life. The next line is literally the title of the song. Midnight Romeo. I've never said anything even like that. That's close the name of the that. pizza company. The pizza company okay. is Midnight Ro Ma Romeo's Pizza delivers very late, and they yes. want yes. you to know you can get Romeo's at midnight or a Midnight Romeo, as they have called it here. If you will, I show me okay. yours. I'll show you mine. That's easy. They've got a pizza exchange program where <laughs> <laughs> give me your old pizza, and I'll give you this new one. Exactly. Alternat alternatively, you know how every PG thirteen movie you can say fucking it once. Maybe this one line is referring okay. to genitals. Now we do get to Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Do they work? I want to hit gonna make you sweat. pizza. Gonna make you sweat. Gonna feel it from head to toe. That's that's, that's jalapeno. On the oh, on the pizza, uh -huh. it's mm -hmm. very spicy, and you're like, "Ooh, I can feel this through my whole body. It's so zesty." Oh, and it says here a little later in the song, "Tonight your dinner's free." So, like, they probably got there after thirty minutes. Let me just say, uh, problematic push play lyrics. Tonight your dinner's free. What's in it for me? No, sometimes you just buy the pizza because you want to buy the pizza for someone. Yeah, hey, Goofy's in there, so watch what you're doing there, push play. Uh, I played uh, uh, my my little one, my four year old. Uh, we were talking to her about Kesha and who Ke Ke Kesha uh -huh. is. I I think she came yes. up because you had uh, or your wife Teresa had discussed Kesha with her on tour, and I wanted to play a song of hers to familiarize her with, with this concept. So I picked TikTok the concept of the Kesha. concept of Kesha, the very idea of Kesha, and I picked TikTok because it, it slaps. But I. I noticed that luckily there's a kids bop version of it because some of the lyrics are challenging for a four year old. Um, I just wanted to hit you guys with the yeah. What do you? What does she brush her teeth? The, okay, with? <laughs> so uh, grab my glasses. I'm out the door. I'm going to hit this city before I leave. Brush my teeth and then I go and pack. <laughs> Because when I leave for the night, I ain't coming back. Well, that's very responsible. You're gonna yeah. go maybe spend the night at a friend's house. Yeah, spend the night at a friend's house, and then uh, later, later we got drop top and playing our favorite CDs, pulling up to the parties, trying to get a little bit silly, which actually sounds mm. more like drug use than tipsy. Yes. Trying to get a little bit silly. Tipsy sounds like I'm gonna have one drink too many because I've earned it. At, I've had a hard day at work. I'm going to have one drink too many and then wait and sober up before I head home. So here's a weird, uh, uh, a weird change I didn't see coming. Don't stop. Make it pop. DJ, blow my speakers up tonight. I'm all right till we see the sunlight. So that's again, perhaps Not, I'm gonna fight. It, no. They're all right. Like, this is more disturbing, kids, Bob. This is someone who is only okay when it's nighttime and they're in a darkened <laughs> club. And then when they see the it's sun a come up at it's... five in the morning, they're like, well, time to get back to my terrible kids, I guess. I hate this. And then is... 
the best part of TikTok, the kids bot version, is that's all the words in the entire song because they can't make any of the rest. The rest of the song is unsalvageable. So I hand to God for 90 <laughs> seconds. They do the chorus five times. <laughs> that's it. That's it. They can't do it. They can't like get like boys want to touch our junk and all that stuff. Nope. Can't yeah, figure yeah. it out. Can't figure it out. Can't do it. Just going to do the chorus five times. Kids bop. The Kids Bop version of Sleazy is just an instrumental. Um, thank you all so much for listening to our program. We hope you've enjoyed yourself. Uh, again, our new website and YouTube channel is McElroy Family. If you are subscribed to MBMBAM on YouTube, uh, one, sorry about the years-long neglect of that. Thank you for your patronage. Uh, but it has been resurrected as McElroy Family. So you're already subscribed, but it's worth it to go check. And uh, um, McElroy.Family is the website. If you would go check it out and uh, you know follow. There's a Twitter account, too, at McElroy Family. Honestly, don't know might just be a good like catch-all feed we don't exactly know what, what we're gonna do with that yet but uh if you could go subscribe to that channel and bookmark that page we'd sure appreciate it it's uh it we're really happy with it and we think it came out real neat and that's gonna be for the future like where uh we've got we're gonna have the McElroy mail our mailing list that you can get stuff through and also uh the the website is gonna be where all tour information and there's a merch link there and a link to donate to the show all that stuff it's all at McElroy.family, M-C-E-L-R-O-Y, in case you're curious. Um, and also, uh, go check out McElroyMerch.com. You can see some of that at McElroy.family as well. The but fucking th- December pin of the month is so fucking great. It it's is It's real great. There's ornaments on there, too. There's some good stuff that you want to get all your family and friends. And, the- you know, that coworker that you drew their name for the Secret Santa gift exchange, you're like, I, don't, I literally know nothing about them. Get them some of our McRoy merch. It's as good as anything else you would get them. Fair. The December pen of the month is my job application uh, electronic sign that says you know on it. It's so fucking choice. It's really good. Uh, anything else? Uh, start setting in your Candle Nights questions. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song It's a Departure off the album Putting the Days to Bed. It's a fantastic album, fantastic dude, and uh, hey, good holidays gift, I bet. Uh, also want to thank Maximum Fun for having us on the network. Definitely want to shout out that uh, the JV Club uh, with Janet Varney has joined the network uh, yes. very recently. So uh, if, you've, if you've sampled the other shows on the network, go give that one a try because it's uh, fantastic and much better than any of the shows that we make. So that's something that we're going to have to struggle with. Do you guys want the final? Yes. Yeah. This final Yahoo was sent in by Graham Roebuck. Thank you. It's Yahoo Answers user Al the Pal, who I'm almost certain I've gotten the last question out of before. Al the Pal asks, I know cows have udders, (laughs) but do they also have breasts? (laughs) (laughs) My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. I'm bailiff Jesse Thorne. And I'm Judge John Hodgman. If you live on the west coast of North America, we're coming your way. That's right. Judge John Hodgman is taking justice to the west coast on tour. Starting where? Vancouver, British Columbia, January 15th. Then to Seattle, Washington on the 16th. Portland, Oregon on the 17th. San Francisco, California on the 18th. And Los Angeles, California, the City of Angels on January 22nd. Tickets are on sale now. You can find links to all of the shows at MaximumFun.org. And if you're going to be in one of those cities and you have a dispute we can try on stage, send it to us. Just go to MaximumFun.org slash JJHO or email Hodgman at MaximumFun.org. I'm ready to judge you on the road. Take that, Jack Kerouac, author of On the Road.